Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and welcome back to the Awakening the Sleeping Beast campaign or the uh, Return of the Sleeping Beast campaign our long 60 year American campaign that we've restarted about 30 times is back baby and I know I've been neglecting you guys I apologize I do but uh, this game wears on you over time and it, it, it does get very repetitive so i've i've kind of let the game sit for a little while there's been several small updates that have changed different things about the game and i'm very interested to see how they play out in the uh, grand scheme of things so welcome 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 back john aaron how's it going harry frostman kevin michael j bryce gaming nightshade travis ender nuke twan jonathan appreciate you guys dropping in let's remember what we're doing here so as you guys know this is not the americans or the good guys eskel coming in dropping his re-up for six months thank you eskel appreciate you i need to turn up my uh, headset volume apparently there mm. we go all right oh my god Y'all are going crazy. Haas coming in re-upping his membership for 10 months as well. John Aaron coming in re-upping for 11 months. Thank you guys so much, man. Thank you guys. And welcome to the stream. Klee, I see you as well. Haas, good to see you. Kobe, Abdullah, good to see you guys. All right. Let's try to remember where we are in the grand scheme of things. It is currently August of 1934, which means there is 16 years left in this campaign. That's it. Just 16 years. But 16 years is still a very long time. Uh, we've got several missions going on up here. We've got convoys, naval invasions. We've got conquests. So we need to make sure we know what we're doing here. Uh, we currently have nobody up here on this conquest of northern England, which is not ideal. So uh, that's the next thing we would like to... Holy... Never mind. That's going to take 1.1 million tons. Uh, how much is our Navy currently? Our full Navy power currently, tonnage-wise, is um, not much bigger than that. So I think we're going to have to hold off on, on that. So that's probably why we said, no, we're not going to invade uh, Scotland at this point. Hopefully, if you guys remember last time, we did actually take Eastern England. So we have a, a foothold in England, or what is left of it after they capitulated. So hopefully that'll give us a chance to start taking over some territory here and maybe making something out of that. Now, there is a lot going on down here in Africa. Uh, if you guys remember, we have a couple footholds here in Africa. We are uh, currently uh, against the French. Uh, so we, we have lots of things going on here, man. We're, there's a huge war going on. Uh, and I think it's a good idea for us to just kind of go over who we're allied with, what we're doing. And currently, the only we, we don't have any allies. We, we legitimately have zero allies. The Germans have dropped us. We were allied with the Germans for a very long time. They have dropped us as an ally. We're currently at war with Japan and France. So th those will be our goals here. And as you can see, we've got uh, land invasions of a lot of French countries here in South Africa or in Al Africa in general. So looking forward to uh, seeing if we can make, a, make a, a little bit of a stand there. Uh, over here in Asia... In, in the Japanese area, we have quite a few things going. We got a naval invasion up here. And as you can see, it's going to take nine months for us to invade Korea. Uh, we have, it looks like, Southwest Korea that we're invading currently. Um, we have enough tonnage there, but we got to be careful because if we lose another ship up here in terms of needing to be repaired, we're going to actually lose progress there. So what we need to do is uh, take some of these guys and send up there if we can. Um, I would like to send these guys up there if we can. Both of these guys are, are struggling for, yeah, these guys are actually, okay, we, we're, we're losing our, uh, opportunity here. It's, I don't think there's much we can do about it. These Japanese are harassing our invasion fleets, which is to be expected right so uh we don't have the tonnage in the neighborhood because everybody's being repaired that's our issue right now and then those that aren't being repaired are currently in fights so a lot to a lot to unwrap here 
But uh, we are making progress. You guys know that. Um, let's check out our naval invasion over here. We currently have no tonnage down here. Let's move you guys just a little closer. We need 82,000 tons. We've got plenty there to try to take Senegal. Um, and then we have these guys, obviously, right here as well. So we can move you guys up a little bit closer. Get in that gap. Um, obviously, this is ours. Uh, Politics-wise, I don't think there's anything we can do here. Let's just check. Yeah, we can't issue another naval invasion because this one just started. So we're going to have to hold there. Again, our goal here is to uh, take as much territory as possible before the end of this campaign. Um, and we've been fighting the Spanish for a long time. We, we fought the Italians. We fought everybody pretty much. At some point in this, this war, we have fought everybody. We have taken a lot of territory from over here. We have taken pretty much every island over here. We got Now that we're against France, we could actually take some more of their territory over here. Uh, so that's something we need to start looking at as well. Um, so yeah, we, that is that is something we need to do. So as soon as we can, we're going to be starting to try to island hop, take the French territory that is over here. I want to control all these islands in the uh, Pacific, South Pacific, if we can. Um, we no longer allies with Germany, so we may end up in a war with Germany in the near future as well, where we try to take over uh, even more territories. Um, I, the goal, again, in the next 16 years, is to take as much territory as possible. That is our goal. Okay? So, with all of that being said, let's start with the convoys, shall we? So, currently here, we have the heavy cruiser Hazardous and a fleet of destroyers to protect our 11 transports against the Miyuki and the Eng Engi. Anguille? That's French. I don't know what it is. But uh, one heavy cruiser versus two light cruisers. Their light cruisers are not exactly tiny, so we'll have to keep that in mind. But uh, I have a feeling our, our heavy cruiser should be up to the pa or up to the task. It is a uh, willpower class. Now, I don't remember everything about this campaign. I just would be 100% with y'all. Um, but uh, y'all know the deal. Um Travis Runyon, thank you for becoming the newest member and then re-upping for three months. I'm not sure how that works, but thank you. Appreciate you, my dude. What up, Scott? How's it going? Dr. Van Gelder, Wicked, good to see you guys. Antoon, how's it going? Kobe coming in, dropping five gifted members on the chat. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget, if you guys are enjoying the stream, make sure you guys punch that like button. It lets YouTube algorithm know that this is a place to come out and hang out. Have a good time. Okay, I may have turned my uh, volume up just a little too much now. Let's go back down to like 80%. That's better. All right, so we have lots of, lots of destroyers, lots of transports. Um, I would like to get our destroyers together. So let's grab these guys. Um, tight formation. Enemy is spotted to the southwest, so let's take a look where we're at here. Let's head that direction. You are already heading in the right direction. This is a pretty modern cruiser in terms of our designs, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Should be a pretty solid heavy cruiser. Now, obviously, the biggest thing is watching for torpedoes, uh, which is one of the reasons we're bringing these destroyers out. If we can bait the torpedoes out of these guys early. Uh, Kobe, thank you for dropping five gifted members on the chat as well. Thank you so much, my dude. Get some goats in the chat for everybody who's already gifted and re-upped their memberships this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, this night. All right, we're going to kind of head, I guess, straight, more or less. We are starting to throw torpedoes into the water. Now, these, if I remember correctly, are more uh, gunboat-esque destroyers. We do have quite a few of them here.
And again, the goal for this is to just bait these guys into lose throwing their torpedoes out here. And then smoking up and dropping out of the, the area. And let's make sure we dodge torpedoes, please. We actually got a torpedo hit or they hit each other. I'm not sure. Alright. And with that, it's time to see what our heavy cruiser can do. Now we have 9 inch guns, so I think we're going to make sure we're firing AP. We are firing standard armor piercing shells. So we'll see how this goes. We have a veteran crew. I can't see the torps. Darn glare of the sun on the water. All right, there we go. We good. Look at how many torps they can throw out. Okay, one down. Doubling back to dodge the next set of torps. Let's try to make sure we run these, this guy down here. We don't want him getting away. He's capable of 39.9 knots, which is just insane. All right, let's get our uh, destroyers tur turning back around here. Uh, we'll turn those off to make sure we at least have some torpedoes in reserve, just in case. I don't think we'll need them, but I would definitely like to uh, get some flooding or some decent hits here. problem is he's just so fast. Trying to hit this fast of a target is not easy. Like, dude is actually faster than my goddamn destroyers. Put that in perspective. Look at this little turd. Damage this funnel. Okay, go to auto. See if we can get them with some HE or something from this range. Like, I would expect them to still use AP, but... There we go. There's a flood. That'll slow him down. And now he's in trouble. At this range, we're just going to rip him apart. You're not fast enough, sunshine! And anticipating any potential torpedoes, we're just going to get skinny here, use the front guns. So our first battle back into Ultimate Admiral, and it is a uh, success for our heavy cruiser Hazardous, living up to its name. Lost 20 crew, but we took out 2,500. Sank two ships, protected our convoy. Love to see it. Uh, who we got? We got Zikas in the chat. We got Cam in the chat. What up, Cam? We got Wyatt. What up, Wolf? How's it going? Aaron Ball? 
Zain, how's it going? Mace, good to see you. Ave. Harry, Tron, how's it going, everybody? I think I've got everybody caught up. Scott, I don't know if I called you out or not, but thank you so much for joining us. If I miss anybody during this stream, please just yell at me in the chat. I will try to get you guys caught up. What up, Yair? How's it going? Zachary, good to see you guys. Just unlocked the Kansas. Dude, Kansas is fantastic, man. I love that ship. All right. So, first convoy mission back, and we absolutely dominated. You'll love to see it. Uh, this, nothing will change on this, so let's just go to the next convoy mission. We have a single battleship versus, oh my god. It is the Kingslayer. It is a Paladin-class battleship of 85,589 tons. It has 12 16-inch main guns with 10 times 3, so 35-inch guns, uh, 24 3-inch guns, and uh, 66 2-inch guns. All right, well, this should be a fight. That's for sure. This should definitely be a fight. Joey, what's up? Mopar, good to see you guys. Elijah, good to see you. All right, what we got? So, if you guys need a refresher of what the, Mon or not Montana, but the uh, Kingslayer class, or I forget what we just called this. Look at this beautiful battleship. Little bit of texture issues. But uh, she should be more than capable of protecting these transports. All right. Now, the big question is, do we have radar? I don't think we do, because I'm not seeing any sort of things. So this may be an outdated, needing updated battleship. Yeah, it's only got a Citadel 4. I don't know, man. These guns may not be as good as... Yeah, these are only Mark 1s. This could end poorly for us. We are heavily outnumbered. I would not say we were outgunned, though. So, to the northeast... We will head in this direction-ish, prepared to engage. What up, Puddin? How's it going? Joey, good to see you guys. All right, we're getting engaged. Here we go. Multiple light cruisers spotted. Sixteen inch guns opening fire. Now we have a very potent secondary battery on this thing, uh, but against light cruisers, I'm not sure how effective they are going to be. I guess there's only one way to find out. I think we start making our turn out to bring all of our firepower to barrier. Let's go ahead and slow down and get our uh, accuracy bonus going as well. Our biggest issue here is going to be reload and accuracy, I think. If we're accurate, we're going to be fine. If we're not, this is going to end very poorly for us. You can see they are splitting up trying to uh, find our weakness here. I think, judging by their, their closing velocity here, I think we need to uh, start maybe kiting out here. Last thing we want is to have all of these guys dropping their torpedoes on us. Come on, King Slayer. Let's 
see what you got, baby. Now, this is one of the biggest downsides to our fleet currently, is that we have a lot of ships. We've been in war for a long time. We have not been able to um, refit a lot of our older designs. Uh, also, our crew training on this particular ship is not the greatest. So it has not been in a, involved in a lot of fighting, uh, which is unfortunate. Hopefully that does not play too big of a role in this fight. But as you can see, we are struggling to hit targets. They do seem to be keeping outside of their own effective torpedo range, which is good news for me. They know if they get too close, our secondaries are going to open up on them and they're going to have a bad day. At range, they can dodge our main guns and we only have so many main guns to shoot, right? So... Not a bad strategy by them. But our first shot out, and that was with high explosive as well, doing 1,300 damage. You'll love to see it. I may start to close the distance a little bit here. So these guys have the, the ability to dictate the engagement with their speed. That was a swing and a miss by us. Okay, we're getting a little too close. Now they're starting to land lots of shells on us, which is not ideal. Hoping that this allows us to hit them, though. Like, any one of these ships takes a decent hit from us, that's probably going to be the end of them. Oh, shit. Turn! Okay, we did get within range of their torpedoes. Not ideal. Fortunately, this thing doesn't, like, we, we get enough of a, uh, Warning from our acoustics to let us know that so we don't get completely yeeted by these torpedoes But that is definitely a warning that we got too close So We're gonna double back here Our biggest worry in this fight is torpedoes, but also fires as you guys can see we've already lost two and a half percent of our crew in the short amount of time that these guys have been able to fire HE at us This may be one of those situations where we just uh, try to disengage. If, But the problem is we're not going to be able to disengage if they don't want us to because they have the speed advantage. Okay, we could actually disengage here. I want to wait till they break contact completely if we can. Okay. One more parting shot just to make sure that they understand. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and end the battle. They can't shoot us anymore. So we lost 60 crew, they lost 50 crew. Um, draw. It's one of those things where a single battleship protecting our transports is not our best use of that battleship either. Uh, without any support craft, it's very vulnerable to those fast-moving ships. It's very hard for us to hit them, um, especially the light cruisers. The heavy cruisers, I don't think, would have been an issue. Of course, the heavy cruisers are never going to put themselves in a position where they get to uh, fight us. Um, it, they want to use their screeners, their, their light cruisers. Mr. Fox, how's it going? Jacob, good to see you. Sean, how's it going? Yeah, abridged. How's it going, man? Um, yeah, I this Sunday night's my night to do uh, Ultimate Admiral, and I've neglected it for several weeks now, so I, I want to get back into it, try to finish off this campaign if we can. All right. So, technically, we managed to protect our convoy in that one, which was our goal. Uh, force the enemy back so that they cannot engage our transports. 
Uh, we've still got the conquest, which we are not doing anything with. We've got our naval invasions, and that should be the end of this. Let's take a look at our financial situation. We are currently uh, getting $800 million in a surplus each month, so that's big. From a research standpoint, are we focusing anything? We are still focusing hull construction, big guns, and submarine hulls. Okay, I think we pull off of the hull construction... And just let big guns and uh, stuff do their thing. What is this turret mechanism that we're working on here? Advanced automatic gun reload. Holy sh... Okay. Well, I mean, that sounds like something I would like to get as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and pop that. We'll get that next month. Uh, but I think one of the things that we need to work on very, very soon is refitting our ships. And we've been out in combat for so long that we haven't had a chance to leave our ships in um, port long enough to actually refit them. So I think that's one of our priorities that we must do in the very near future. Uh, what's our next submarine haul that we're getting here? Cruiser submarines. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Interesting. What do we got over here? Enhanced submarine torpedoes 5. Okay. Don't need to worry about that anytime soon. What's our next upgrade on our guns? Mark II 18-inch guns. Okay. All right, so we've got lots of goods coming. Just takes time. Uh, in terms of cruisers, we have a potential to build a 20,000 ton heavy cruiser. Uh, in four months, we could we could make a new cruiser design. All right, and I think uh, we're just going to go ahead and open up our new turn. Let's go. It is officially September of 1934. What up, Thor? How's it going? Glad you're uh, interested in watching UAD again. I know you guys have been asking for it, and I just haven't had a chance. I say I haven't had a chance. I haven't had the interest to play Ultimate Admiral is the biggest thing. Like, every time I, I sit down to get ready to go, I just, like, I'm like, ah, I don't really want to play Ultimate Admiral tonight. But tonight, I was like, you know what? I want to play. Let's get in there. And I know they've had several updates since the last time we played, so I wanted to get in and check out some of the new stuff and, and see how things are working. Uh, I finished, uh, for, for me, last week was what I called Hell Week. It was the fourth week in the most brutal week of our weightlifting program that we, uh, started, uh, not too long ago. And it was all the sets. We, this, this weightlifting program was focusing on, um, muscle endurance. So it was a lot of sets, a lot of reps, and it was, uh, at like two thirds max capacity in terms of our weight. So it was, it was a brutal brutal four weeks and the fourth week definitely kicked my ass but uh, we ended the week with a banger um, and now this coming week will be a deload week for me at the gym so we'll have a pretty solid easy week uh, we have plenty of anti-submarine capability here so I would expect this guy to get yeeted uh, especially if these yeah these are the hunter class these guys are literally hunter class destroyers the whole purpose is to kill submarines if I can't kill one goddamn sub with this many hunter class destroyers in this fleet i'm gonna be upset so auto resolve and it is sunk okay i was gonna say there's no reason he should have any chance uh here we have again um our battleships going to fight these cruisers um it's another willpower how our class heavy cruiser as well as a second amendment class light cruiser Uh, I think we will take this fight and see what we can get away with here. Jacob coming in, becoming the newest member on the channel, and then Thor re-upping for 11 months. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Can we get some goats in the chat for them? There's been a lot of small updates. It's hard to tell everything. Like, uh, if you have the game, just open up the news section. It'll explain everything. Oh my god, this is an old design. This is the Three Mile Island. It's got all the guns. All 14-inch guns, too. So, I think Tennessee Stud needs to take the lead here. We've already been spotted. Put 
collide them together. Enemy is spotted where exactly? To the southwest, so out this direction somewheres. And then Tennessee Stud, please take the lead as well. That's my battleship, cruiser. Come on. Pay attention. Um, again, off to the southwest. So we would expect him to be over in this direction somewhere. goal here once again is to close the distance spot the enemy um, see if we can bait some of their torpedoes out in the direction of our more agile ships Enemy spotted. Okay, let's close in a little bit closer here. They are firing at Bert already. Let's go ahead and use our smoke, please. Big hit from our battleship. You'll love to see that. We did a, We did manage to sucker in some of the torpedoes. So we're going to go ahead and start to back off now. These guys did their job. Don't run into the torpedoes. Battleships doing their job. Tennessee Stud, I need you to close a little bit. Uh, we may actually have you go ahead and... Yeah, you're fine, actually. As far as our battleships go... Start turning the Tennessee in. Focus your uh, shots on that little turd, please. Okay, battleships, go ahead and get your uh, bonus going. Beautiful hit. Go ahead and assume torpedoes are en route here. Stud, you're getting a little too close to our battleships. Let's... 
Torps in the water, torps in the water. Battleships, take evasive action. Torps in the water. Oh my god, these guys can't turn for shit. Turn! You're gonna wanna turn! All right. Initial threat dealt with. Um, cruisers, double back, please. Or destroyers and cruiser, double back. Uh, Tennessee stud, you're getting a little crazy here. Please finish that guy off. Torps in the water. Torps in the water. One destroyer has been sunk. Battleships helping getting rid of this light cruiser. Light cruiser down. Alright. Double back. Battleships landing some nasty hits. Oh, god darn it. There's that god dang misclick. Attach, please. Fuck me. Three Mile Island should be the front, so we'll put you there. You take evasive action immediately. Torpedoes en route. You guys are fine. Question mark. Alright, you're getting a little too close, Tennessee. I'm gonna have you go ahead and kite away. Target the guy closest to you, turn in. I need you to turn as far as you can fucking turn. Slow all the way down. Oh, we're taking torps here. It was a dud. It was a dud. Got very lucky, very lucky. Rudder midship. I can't see the torque very well, but I'm hoping that we dodged it. I think we did. Okay. The Yura has gone down. Okay, how we doing over here? Tennessee stud, how you looking? Fire at the Sendai, please. Battleships, how you looking? You're fine. This is a good range for us. I'm happy with that. Good flooding hit on the Sendai. Huge hits. Huge hits out of our uh, battleship and our cruiser on the Sendai. He's now flooding significantly. Torps in the water, torps in the water. Immediately take base. Oh, wait. Who are they torping? Who the hell are they torping? I think they're torping torch. Okay, detach. I'm taking control of you, Torch. Turn to the fucking left, you dumbass! God dang it! Okay, turn, turn all the way, in, all the way in. Slow down. Actually, just slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh my God! It doesn't get much closer than that, folks. Rudder midship. Tennessee stud, how you looking? Why are you on top of them? Ah, uh, you're, you're asking for trouble. There's no reason for you to be this close. All right, turn out. Sad part is I think they're gonna accomplish their mission, which is sending another ship back to getting repaired. Which is exactly what we didn't want to happen. We 
got more flooding on the Sendai. He's going down. Switch targets. Three Mile Island is doing its job. Torch is doing its job. go big hits and floods looks like he's dead in the water we got more torps in the water torps in the water um, change course immediately Our night inch guns are too too strong for this guy's broadside. We're just overpinning. More flooding. We can speed up time here. And down goes the Kurubiguru. Kuru, <laughs> That's hard to say. Good lord. Vimo, how's it going? Weston, good to see you. Greater, how's it going? Overall, pretty solid victory. We did lose 200 crew, but they lost 5,300. We gained 11,000 victory points. They gained 26. We sunk five ships, including four light cruisers and their destroyer. That is an overwhelming victory for the U.S. Hopefully, it does not cost us our invasion in South Korea. Hopefully. Yeah, sorry guys. When I'm in when I'm in a battle like that, especially with that many torpedoes getting launched, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm going to get yeeted. Torpedoes are absolutely ridiculous. What up, Stung? Welcome. Appreciate everybody dropping in. Yep, we're back with the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought Sundays. But uh, a good fight for us. We got another fight. Oh my god. We've got the Divine Judgment... Heavy Cruiser Falcon, which is an Eagle class heavy cruiser with 10 inch guns. Light Cruiser Thrasher and Spokane, which are both Saber class light cruisers. And a Spear Fisher class destroyer. Okay. Um, I guess there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's give her a shot. What was your idea? Yeah, no problem, Thor, man. I'm glad you're enjoying as well. Okay, Divine Judgment is definitely seen better days. That's a, that's a thing. This is a... Uh, 16 inch battleship so we know it's main guns are not that accurate um, I think we want to keep him at the back if we can we've got heavy cruiser Falcon let's send the cruisers out destroyer your job is to find the enemy heavy cruiser Falcon also um, find the enemy and then you will follow the cruisers alright 
Let's pay attention to the walrus and see if we can find the enemy real quick. It's a lot of light cruisers, so we need to try to keep our distance if we can. And we already know they love their torpedoes. As a matter of fact, with this many light cruisers, I think we just send Divine Judgment home anyway. Um, go ahead, retreat. There's no reason for you to engage in this fight. We'll let our cruisers do their job and hope for the best. What are we shooting? Are we shooting uh, standard armor piercing? Okay, so our heavy cruiser is probably going to be overpinning these guys a lot. Uh, it's going to come down to our light cruisers holding their own here. These guys have 6-inch guns and 12 of them. It's a very modern light cruiser. Also has torpedo tubes. We have already been spotted by the enemy, and there they are. Okay, so our goal here would be to try to split the enemy force and attack, you know, a little bit at a time rather than all of them at once. That is our goal. And we got to be careful. We know that their light cruisers are pretty nasty, so we don't want to get too close with our destroyer here. Torps in the water. They're doubling back right into these torpedoes, so we'll see how that goes for them. Take control of our cruisers. Hopefully we get a hit or two on those ships with torpedoes. Dodge torps, please. Huge hit from the six inch guns of the light cruisers. God dang it, I literally had them dodging torpedoes. They still managed to run into a fucking torpedo. Leave it to fucking Washington to fuck it up. Hits another god dang torpedo back there. Uh, this is not what we needed in our fucking light cruisers right now. Out of all the fucking things to hit the torpedoes, the guys that are in the back are the ones fucking eating torpedoes. And again, the downside here is that these guys are going to get... They're going to have to go back and be repaired, and that's going to take them away from their duty, which is trying to fucking take... What a fucking moron. I swear to God, the, the, the dodging torpedoes button is fucking broken. It never fucking works. You are more likely to take fucking torpedoes by having the fucking dodge torpedo button on than you are if you just sailed in a straight fucking line. I swear to God. I hate that button. Like, the button is fucking useless. It doesn't work. They dodge, they dodge, they run right into a fucking torpedo anyway. It's stupid. I hate that fucking button. I should have just taken fucking control of that shit myself and done it anyway. God, that shit's annoying. It's so annoying, man. Dude eats two fucking torpedoes while actively dodging torpedoes somehow. 
I swear to God, it's like they, they go into full on, where's the torpedo? Let me find it and hit it mode, rather than just trying to get away from the motherfucker. The easiest course of action should get them away from a fucking torpedo. It's not that difficult. It's like, okay, torpedo's coming from here. Let me make sure I'm skinny as fuck to that torpedo so that I can make small adjustments and dodge the torpedo. Not doing 80 fucking circles and trying to run into every goddamn torpedo that they send. Like, that's so dumb, man. They need to work on that. That's one thing that they need to fucking fix. Like, dodging torpedoes is not that fucking difficult. It's like, okay, torpedoes are being launched from this direction. We have them on hydroacoustic. We can see them coming. We know their speed and their direction of travel. Let's not get in front of them. It's that fucking easy. <laughs> How hard is it for a fucking AI to go, okay, it's coming from here, it's at this rate of speed, it's coming in this direction, let's turn this way. I, I don't understand why it makes them go in 70 goddamn circles and then fucking run right into the motherfucker anyway. It's just so dumb. <sighs> so dumb. We still ended up getting the better end of that deal. We killed more of them than they killed of us, but we didn't... Nobody got sunk, but that's going to pull us off the fight, probably. So if I had to guess, I'm going to look up at fucking Korea and see that our uh, tonnage is now lower than it needs to be in order to take Korea. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just... That, that shit... Look, I've been playing this game as long as I've been playing World of Warships Legends, okay? There's some things in this game that just drive me bonkers, and that's one of them. Taking torpedoes, when you actively tell your fucking ships to dodge torpedoes, is stupid. And it's something that's been in a, been a problem since the game came out. And the fact that every freaking enemy AI ship is just loaded down with torpedoes, that is their whole strategy. Go as fast as possible and all the torpedoes. That is the only fucking thing that the AI knows how to create in this game. It's so annoying, man. Huh. <sighs> But yeah, I've been playing this game for a long time, so all these little bugs and stuff drive me bonkers, man. Still got enough tonnage up here to keep this going for the moment. So that's at least a good thing. But yeah. That gets annoying. Alright, so three of nine there. We're not currently taking North Korea. So let's go with Japan here. Naval invasion. Uh, Northwest Korea. So, we should be in position to be able to take both of these at the same time, potentially. Hopefully. Uh, no guarantees, though. Let's hope. Um, next, we need to check on our naval invasions down here. This should be going to plan. Beautiful. This conquest should be going away at some point in the future. Um, we do have ships that are heading back down this direction. It is a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser going past a minefield, which is probably not the best place to be fucking sailing. Don't you think? <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert or anything, but probably want to avoid the goddamn minefields around the countries that you're, you know, enemies with. Just a thought. Probably don't sail right through it. Um... They took Malaya. If I remember correctly, it's over here. Yeah. How the fuck did they take Malaya? I have questions. Now we have we have Singapore. The fact that they take Malaya is kind of annoying. They must have had like a uh, conquest pop up for that or something, if I had to guess. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. Uh, we have naval invasions and conquests going on, so nothing new there. Finances-wise, we're still making plenty. We need to check on our uh, turret mechanisms finished, our big guns finished. We're going to keep going on big guns. We have um, submarines coming up in the near future as well. Is that going to finish next? Nope. i got to keep that one. Oh, my God. Keep that one up. Um, what is this hull protection? Super torpedo protection. Wow! 
Good lord. I definitely wouldn't mind having some super torpedo protection, but I don't think it's necessarily a priority. Um, so we just research that over time. What is this? New shells coming up. Advanced naval shells. Okay. Again, not necessarily a priority. Uh, what do we got? Anti-submarine warfare. We got depth charges type 5. So that might be something we want to maybe speed up. Um, from a mine standpoint, we have magnetic mines coming up. Which increases our amount of mines damage that we can do. Okay. Don't need to speed that up. Uh, I think we'll leave this go. I want to keep researching big guns. Cruiser design is going to come up in three months. What do we got in boilers coming up? We've got advanced superheaters. Okay. Don't Again, don't need to necessarily uh, speed that up. All right. I think we're getting to a point where we need to speed up less and less and just let the game take over from a research standpoint. I definitely want to focus big guns. Um, from a range st range finder standpoint, we got all the things that we could possibly need there. Um, but I think from a fleet standpoint, we've got a lot of repairs going on, if I had to guess. Let's go ahead and look at our battleships. Uh, we are still building battleships. Speaking of which, um, yeah, we have a little bit of tonnage available, but not a lot. So maybe we hold off on that because these are a lot of, a lot of big ships. So we have two that are suspended. But uh, we are still working on our uh, brand new Zeta class or Zeta ton class battleship. So that'll be fun. Um, really isn't as many repairs as I thought, so maybe things have gotten repaired, which is good. All right. Um, yeah, I think. I think we need to check in over here and try to add in some new stuff if we can. So in Hong Kong, we have four destroyers. How many destroyers do we have here? One and one. Okay, we need to split these destroyers up if we can. Move ships to here. Send three of these destroyers out, please. Okay. And then here we have one destroyer. Move ship. Snap, crackle, pop, please. One heavy cruiser, one destroyer in Manila in the Philippines. One heavy cruiser. I think both of these guys are about the same. So maybe we send, whoops, send these guys up here. Why is that? Hello? Move ships. I'll right click the mouse button. Okay, heavy cruiser is being repaired still. Okay, so let's hold off on that. Move ships. There we go. Basically, I want to try to get our fleet power up here it's a little bit heavier so that we aren't as likely to lose progress on these naval invasions. Because I would like to take Korea, if at all possible. Um, and then we can look into Manchuria. But... Uh, for the moment, we're, we're hanging in there. Uh, we also need to start looking at uh, these French French provinces over here once we get to deal with a little bit of the Japanese. Uh, over here, we have our Djibouti and Eritrea. Or I forget how this is actually pronounced. Somebody, somebody let me know at one point, and I forget what it was. But... Uh, the Italians own this. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take that from them when we were at war with them. But uh, the Americans are making some uh, progress against the French here in Algeria. Um, we are also... Uh, actually, we're not making any progress here at the moment, but this may have just started. We are not making progress into the Ivory Coast from the Gold Coast, unfortunately. 
or at least not currently. So there is definitely a lot of, there's a lot of going ons out here. <laughs> there definitely is a lot of goings on. Uh, the French are being very active. We're being very active. Africa is a very, very active province from the war standpoint currently. But I think that's as far as we're going to go here. We already finished that, so we're going to go ahead and next turn. Vimo, I'm glad you enjoy, man. I really am. I'm glad you enjoy. What's up, Rogue? How's it going? Dude, I am sweating like crazy. That's another reason I haven't been streaming as much. Um, just because, like, in the summertime, my my AC is just like a window AC in the front room. And it keeps my, my apartment decently chilly. But when I try to stream, like, PC games, man, it just cooks me in my back bedroom. Had a very good vacation. Nice. Glad to hear it. It rains almost every day. The Empire of Japan is accusing our country of war crimes. The Prime Minister is asking your opinion on how to react. Military forces of the Empire of Japan themselves violate human rights and conduct war in prohibited ways. We offer an amount to help in the investigations and punish those actions. $897 million. I mean, we, we do have the money, so I guess we can do that. Yeah, let's do it. It gets rid of some of the unrest as well. China warns their head of admiralty, Ling Zhui. Lin, Ling Zhui. I don't know. For his excessive naval expenditures, he may soon be replaced if, the, uh, if he continues to underperform. All right. And once again, we have a few destroyers, but this time they have two submarines. Uh, these are a little bit stealthier. So these are a little scarier. And these are older... Destroyers, question mark. They still have depth charges four. But uh, this does not look good. And this is Noriko. Oh, God. Imagine if Noriko gets sunk right now. Oh, that'd be terrible. Okay, both of them were sunk. Our, our heavy cruiser was lightly damaged, so not too bad. All right, and here we have a heavy cruiser, the All-American, which is a willpower class heavy cruiser, and a saber class light cruiser to take on nine enemy transports. Uh, we don't get to actually go into this fight for some reason. Auto-resolve, I guess. Um, it says no ship damages. Our naval, the port is almost undefended. Some transports are detected, which are easy prey. I'm assuming that we, we take that. We sank the enemy transports for 8.3 victory points, so. Beautiful. And we managed to damage the port of Brest. So, you love to see that. Oh my god. Dude, the, the Japanese have to stop with these goddamn cruisers, man. Uh, this is not ideal. Um, can we withdraw? We cannot. Alright. Um, I can't afford to take any damage here. Because we have bigger goals. So I think what we're going to do is just retreat from these guys. We're prolonging the inevitable. I know. The Duguay Truin class of light of three light cruisers were the first major French warships built after World War I. Their construction process was defined by the Washington Naval Treaty and lasted from 1922 to 1927. They had a displacement of 9,350 tons at full load and were armed with four twin 6.1 inch guns four triple torpedo tubes, and four AA guns. They were fast cruisers of 30 knots, top speed, but had limited range. All right, we're just going to um, retreat. 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 And retreat. Speed up time.
as much as I would love to go into a fight with these guys, like, we just don't have the ability currently. Um, we've got bigger plans. We don't want to unnecessarily engage. Oh, my God, they're engaging us. We don't want to take unnecessary damage is what I'm saying. And when you consider divine judgment has already taken a lot of damage, we, we just don't want to continue that if we don't have to. Now, these guys can easily catch up to us if they want, but uh, we're going to keep trying to get away and see if they just give up chasing. I think they will. Forty three crate opening yesterday and not one premium ship. Interesting. What's a cool fact, Vimo? Why are there... Oh, these guys have taken torpedoes, I'm assuming. Should be able to end this in uh, eight more minutes game time. About 460 miles away from the city of Brest is the Bismarck Wreck. Nice. I knew it was somewhere in there because that was their whole point, right? Like, Bismarck was trying to get to Brest because at the time it was uh, German-occupied. So, they, they were trying to get to Brest. And, uh, unfortunately, due to the rudder being damaged and them doing gigantic circles and then them also leaking uh, fuel oil into the ocean, they were able to be found by the British fleet and uh, ultimately sunk. Oh, two minutes, 31 seconds, or two hours, 31 minutes. Should be able to end it in 30 seconds. 10, 9, 8, and done. Okay. Successful withdrawal. What up, Dark Architect? How's it going? Uh, definitely be joining you tomorrow. For those of you guys who don't know, Dark Architect has a YouTube channel as well. Uh, and I will be joining him and uh, his partner, Sir Cat, on a live stream tomorrow on their channel. So uh, definitely look forward to that. But Vocton, good to see you. Perlis, good to see you. Have a good night, Sean. I mean, good news is we didn't actually take any mines. We haven't lost any transports either, so that's good. Failed to gain control of Scotland, which is not surprising because we stopped trying to take it. All right. Meanwhile, we are in the zone for this. We have plenty of tonnage for it. Very close, though. And we are still working on this one as well. Five more months to hopefully invade southwest Korea. And then it's going to be six months to invade 
uh, Northwest Korea. These cruisers need to be dealt with, though. And I don't really have a good way of dealing with them. Um, maybe we send some of our submarines up here to help call the herd. This long... Oh, okay. The Kingslayer is over here. Uh, that gives me an idea. So, if we go to ship design, we have the Freedom Class battleships, which are armed with 16 20.9-inch guns, which are actually insane. I don't think we're currently building any of those at the moment, but we have designed them. They are, in fact, a design. Then we have the Zeta Ton class battleships, which we have uh, being built currently. And we have the Noriko class battleships, which are the 17 inch guns. The Paladin class are the 16 inch guns. All right, so the Paladins are something that we need to try to get as well. Um, and then, of course, the Widowmaker's still alive somehow. It's uh, definitely something we need to try to refit if we can to keep them relevant. But uh, if we view the design of our Paladin-class battleships, I would like to try to get these guys refitted, at least the ones that are capable of being refitted right now. Um, as you can see, we can't currently have this on this mount, so we may have to adjust that. Um, we take that and put, these are 16 inch guns, so we need at least a standard superimposed bar bit, I would imagine. Or no, I think it was a tall superimposed. And then we should have our 16 inch triple barrels. There we go. Ship is overweight, but we can we can deal with that. We can make changes. Now, these will be upgraded to the Mark III 16-inch guns as well, which is going to be a huge upgrade because that will make them reload faster, be more accurate, and everything. Uh, but we also want to go ahead and try to uh, just get these things better overall if we can. We can go to... Gear Turbines 2, which saves us quite a bit of weight. Loaded for maximum AP. Um, we have incendiary HE, which is not what we want. We want high capacity HE. And then we want uh, semi ballistic armor piercing, which is fine. Uh, then, as far as tube powder, I would like to have tube powder. We need to get better powders. That's something we definitely need. But we do have TNT3, so that'll make that a little better. And we have electro hydro turrets. And we want the auto-loading guns. Then we want our best stereoscopic rangefinders, our best sonars, our best radio, and Gen 2 radar. Now again, we are going to have to uh, change our ship to be able to afford all of this. But we can make it happen. 
So we are currently eh, just about, we're, we're way overweight actually, we're way overweight. Okay, um, can we increase the beam? Okay, now we're only 7,000 tons overweight. What about the draft? Still about 7,000 tons overweight. Um... Yeah, so we're, we're about 6,000 tons overweight currently. So in order to make this work, we probably want to drop some armor, if I had to guess. Um, easiest way to drop armor quickly would be to drop deck armor. But we can drop our belt armor down. We'll just make that like 12-inch belt armor. Uh, make this 7-inch fore and aft. Then we go with like a 3-inch main deck. Um, for the conning tower, let's drop that to like 10 inches. Superstructure's fine. Uh, we're still 3,700 tons overweight, though. Where else can we pull some armor back? Uh, let's drop our main gun armor down to like 13 inches on the sides. Uh, 5 inches on the top. A 10 inch barbette's probably good. Our 16 inch guns have a, an increased caliber, which we don't want, so we're going to go ahead and drop that back to zero. Now that these are a better gun, they are 50 caliber guns, so these are going to reload faster and be not as accurate as they were with the longer barrel, but Keeping them 50 calibers is fine. Um, and now we are 2,600 tons overweight. Um, where can we save some weight? I mean... Could probably save weight... By reducing the speed of the ship slightly. If we go like 32 knots, okay, 31 knots. I don't want to go lower than 30 knots. Okay, then it's 1,200 tons. Um, what if we reduce the range? There we go. Okay, can we then go up to 31 knots? No. Um... I mean that's only a hundred and thirty tons. We can we can make a hundred and thirty tons and still have thirty one knots. Um, let's see. Uh, we're currently at one hundred and fifty seven percent engine efficiency. So if we drop from forced boilers down to induced, that's one hundred and twenty five, and that gets us under our limit as well. Can we go thirty two knots? We can. Sixteen thousand kilometers range, probably not the best, but I think that's much better overall. Should be a lot more accurate, so I think we're good. This will take ten months to refit as well, so that's something else. Like this is the problem. Like when you do these these big refits like this, instead of having smaller refits along the way, you do these giant refits. It takes forever. What up, Ghazi? How's it going? Brian, how's it going? What up, Daniel? Good to see you. Uh, my day's been going pretty well, Vimo. 
Okay, Kingslayer is currently in port. We're going to go ahead and refit him. Uh, let's check if we're over a limit. We're not, so we're good there. We're also increasing the size of the shipyard again, even though we don't really need to. We're just doing it for extra shipbuilding capacity. Uh, we've got a convoy down here near Puerto Rico getting attacked. I forgot we got to take some French territory over here as well. I think we can take uh, French Guyana, take uh, this French territory. There's a lot of French territory that we need to take, but uh, yeah, let's take it. So we have the cruiser, heavy cruiser Baltimore, which is an Eagle class heavy cruiser with 10 inch guns versus a single light cruiser and several destroyers. So this should be an easy enough fight. What up, Godzilla? Chris, how's it going? Appreciate you, Chris. Hope you have a great night, man. All right. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a night battle here. Enemy is spotted to the southeast. So we are going to speed up time. We have officially been spotted. All right, Scott, sorry to hear that, man. Hopefully you get feeling better. Have a good night. Look at the amount of torpedoes these little turd burglars are sending down range. The hell is their light cruiser shooting? 6.6 .6 inch guns. Light cruiser's actually doing damage. Not expecting a light cruiser to be able to punch us. It's definitely doing some damage, so I gotta be careful. And this ship has not seen a lot of action, so it doesn't it doesn't have the uh, accuracy. The experienced crew. can see accuracy is definitely struggling and then we're over pinning a lot does not help there we go 
Our destroyer is getting a little bit too close for their own good. Let's double back and finish this little turd off. There we go. Just kind of uh, conducting a little bit of hit and run tactics here. Get close, sink a ship, move away, regroup. And then do it all over again. to showcase that we are fully capable of defending our uh, homeland here. Come on, Baltimore. We need you to hit the target, man. Aim further ahead of them. This is the part that drives me crazy is like a human would be able to go okay we're not leading enough let's aim ahead of them but i don't get to control that so i just got to sit here and hope for the best he goes. These guys are getting awfully close to my transports and I don't like it. go. That was a big hit. That'll make him easier to hit too, so probably just sealed his fate. Come on, Baltimore. Keep fighting, baby. Another destroyer. 
And that just leaves the cruiser. Come on, give me some hits, baby. What up, Houston? How's it going? back. Problem is with naval guns, um, outside of like shore bombardment, like they wouldn't really be that effective. Um, like an Iowa class battleship would get torn apart by missiles before it ever got a chance to actually engage with the main guns. That's why the navies around the world have gone more missile intensive and smaller, faster ships. All right, he's disengaging, so will we. So the light cruiser gets away, but everybody else was sunk. That'll be a victory for us. We did take a little bit of damage here. Is this little turd actually, like, gonna come at us, or is he just gonna be a little dirt? If he wants a piece, we'll give it to him. If he wants to stay out there and kite the entire time, we'll just let him go. Go home to France before you don't get a chance to. Uh, I mean, in fairness, Houston... If, if you were nailed by a 16-inch high explosive from shore bombardment, I don't think you would know it. I think it would be over before you realized it. Because I think the high explosive shells were uh, 1,800 pounds or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the high-capacity high explosive uh, charge was, but... Uh, they call it high capacity for a reason. Yeah, but but at the end of the day, when you're firing a gun, okay, the maximum you're ever going to get out of that gun would be whatever your muzzle velocity is. At a 45 degree launch angle, like you, you're not going to get any better range out of it. That's the thing. Like it's still a ballistic trajectory. So you're going to have a finite range. And unfortunately, missiles can go a lot further. I mean, the Iowas were capable of firing out to 24 nautical miles. And uh, I mean, most most missiles are pretty much capable of going 100 nautical miles and then with the fact that you have sa satellites and rad over the horizon radar and stuff like that to detect such a large ship, like I don't think the Iowas would stand a chance. And apparently the U.S. government agrees because they aren't bringing them back. Shocker. From a power projection standpoint, like if you wanna if you wanna like show off and and march a fucking Iowa class around to different ports and be like, look, this is what we are capable of 30 years ago. Now imagine what we can do. <laughs> Or, God, fucking 50 years ago, right? Got no seven. Good God. Time flies by. We're in the 20s now. This is fucking 70 years ago. Damn. <laughs> 
Damn. It's been a long time since World War II. All right, so our subs are going up against a couple of light cruisers uh, and a destroyer. And we lost a submarine and we did light damage to a Luton. Unfortunate. Not unexpected, but unfortunate. They got a lot of uh, small vessels out here in West Africa. Seems like the enemy AI has uh, decided that small, fast ships are what they're after as well. And considering it's only 1934, I feel like they're ahead of the curve. <laughs> like it took it took the real world a lot longer to figure this out, but in the game they're like, nope, small, fast-moving ships armed with a lot of torpedoes and standoff capabilities seem to be our best bet at survival. Big ships don't last long. Especially when you got superior big ships on the other side. <laughs> Alright, so the other ship design that we need to think about. Um, the big big issue right now is we don't have a lot in terms of shipbuilding capacity left. Because we're building so many big ships. But uh, I definitely want to take a look at our willpower class heavy cruisers. These were upgraded in 32. Let's go ahead and view them again and see if there's some upgrades that we can make to them. You wish you could have dropped Zarbamba? Mm, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that goddamn thing. Most powerful explosive ever detonated by mankind. 50 megatons yield it was so big that it even fucked up the russians when they dropped it like they weren't expecting it to be as big just like uh the americans at castle brava like when we detonated that one like that literally ended up a bigger yield than was expected and not just a little bit bigger like way bigger than they expected so again nuclear weapons in general especially hydrogen bombs and stuff like that like fusion fusion bombs just should not exist, man. There's there's no reason to have that much power in the hands of morons. Especially, like, impulsive morons. For sure. It's a scary fucking thought, man. Go with better auto loaders. Uh, Gen 2 radar. Depth charge. Uh, still at depth charge 4. Sonar 3. So... For the most part, everything stays the same. Um, currently at 25 knots. Need to shave a little bit of weight off of this thing. Already don't have much in terms of armor, which is why we were getting pinned by a goddamn light cruiser. Not ideal. Um... I think there's an easy way to do this in terms of dropping weight. I guess we just drop some of this. There we go. All right, that gets us more, more auto loading capabilities here. Means our reload time is just 17 seconds for these nine inch guns. A cobalt bomb would be, there's a lot of things that would be worrisome to be honest. 
Trust me, there's a lot worse weapons out there that are capable of being built than uh, what we've seen already used. But uh, there's no reason for these weapons to be built and used. And the consequences of using them are just catastrophic. All right, so we have some of these guys out here. That does put us over our limit though. Um, but we can take and go in here, find our battleships and temporarily suspend Roosevelt to free up some space. All right, and with that, where are we at? I think we're done with all the new things. Still making progress, still making progress, still not making progress, still not making progress. Okay, so we're making progress up here in Algeria, not making progress down here, unfortunately. Uh, but we are invading Senegal. Um, five more months for that. And then over here in Korea, we have five more months for this naval invasion and five more months here. So in five months, we finish all three of our naval invasions, hopefully for the better. We'll see how that goes. From a research standpoint, we're still working on big guns. Uh, cruisers are coming up. Submarine hauls just finished. Um... Enhanced submarine torpedoes. We can go ahead and finish that next month. Get that done. I kind of want to see what kind of torpedo or what kind of submarines we can get away with. You know what I mean? Um, I would also like to get some explosives, though. I think I think that's something we need to start working on as well. So maybe pull off of this and go with explosives. We got to try to get some better, better like tube powder, preferably. Um, from a fleet standpoint, we are currently refitting the Kingslayer. Um, we're refitting our heavy cruisers that are currently in port. And next turn. Let's go. What is the most overpowered ship in World of Warships, in my opinion? Um... The most overpowered ship in World of Warships, in my opinion. Uh, if used correctly, Shima is disgusting. Um, Yama and Konk are both extremely powerful, but I don't think that they're overpowered just due to the fact that they are giant targets, easy to easy to take out. Um... Yama, if played correctly, is very difficult to get rid of and has the overmatch ability. So, Yama's pretty disgusting. Uh, Conqueror just doesn't have the armor, despite having the heal capabilities. If it gets focused, it usually goes down pretty quick. Um, Worcester. Worcester's pretty busted. Des Moines. Des Moines, though, Des Moines is pretty easy to counter. Whereas Worcester has 32 millimeters of armor everywhere. So yeah, I'd say I'd say Shima Yama pretty pretty much up there. Um, Kaba can be annoying as shit to get rid of if it's a gun like an agile gunner. Um, doesn't always win though, just due to the fact that they tend to play more like light cruisers than they do. Anything else? All right, here we go. Uh, All American and Claymore versus eight transports. Auto resolve that again. 
and done some more damage to the port of Brest. This freaking goddamn light cruiser division again. I'd like to just withdraw. Can't. So we got to go into battle. Try to withdraw the old fashioned way. I have not played U-Boat, but I have actually considered it recently. So look forward to potentially seeing some U-Boat on the channel in the near future. Um, that is something that I've actually been watching quite a bit of lately. Um, I just, I don't have the money right now to buy new games. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I have been watching quite a bit of U-Boat lately. And it looks like a fun game. I don't know how good I'd be at it. Because it looks pretty technical as well. Lenin is very good, but again, with any of the Russian battleships, as soon as you get their broadsides, they're done. Like, they're very good. Plus, they have the limited damage controls with the meta of the fire starters not, not boating well for them. So, I mean, yes, they are very good. Are they overpowered? I wouldn't say so. Um, Kansas, I, I would say Kansas is a little a little bit overpowered for its tier, uh, just due to the fact that you're sending 12 rounds down range and it's freaking accurate as crap, and they, they pack a punch. Plus, it is uh, enough to make sure that you can... You have enough armor there that you can you can survive for a long time as well. You're not relying on, on luck. But I think cruisers in general are probably... Like, mines... Mines definitely would be overpowered, in my opinion. Uh, that, that ship is just busted. There really isn't a lot of overpowered ships, though. Sumner. Sumner for its tears probably on the list of being a little too strong. Baldur's Gate. I've seen that game as well, and while I do like the concept, I don't think I I would be like playing that game for very long. I think I would get bored with it really quickly. I've never gotten into Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that in the past. I do like role playing games in general. But I like more role-playing games where there's, like, dialogue and stuff. Uh, whereas, I don't want to have to sit there and read everything. Plus, it's kind of a third-person, top-down kind of adventure. And I don't really care for that. I like more of a first-person. Bismarck is definitely not overpowered <laughs> at all. Ace Combat. I've played Ace Combats in the past. Uh, I, of course, my favorite Ace Combat was Ace Combat 4 Shattered Skies on PlayStation 2. Uh, I love that game. But I haven't, I haven't tried to play an Ace Combat in years, man. Well, I mean, in fairness, Stung, games have always had bugs. But it, it does feel like as games have gotten more and more complex and as the developers have had more and more opportunities to fix the bugs after release with the, having consoles connected to the internet and being able to patch them out, I feel like the developers tend to be a lot more lax about bugs than they used to be. Because they'll just... oh. It can have bugs now. We'll we'll fix it down the road at some point. You know, here's here's eighty dollars for a game. Like 
game the game prices are insane um for some of the quality of the product that you end up getting a lot of times whoops sorry didn't mean to smack you guys what up long how's it going yeah, any any ship in the game can be countered, but there are still there are still ships that are in the game that are stronger than they should be. Kamikaze at tier four is obviously a broken ship for its tier. Um, tier five is probably the most balanced tier. There are some standouts. Yuga is very strong if you give it a broadside like that. Reload booster at tier five is kind of busted, um, but it doesn't overmatch. And it's not got the best armor in the world because it's still, at the end of the day, it's just a Japanese battlecruiser. So, like, it's decently counterable. Um, but I'd say Tier 5 is probably the most variety of, of powerful ships. So, like, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, all of the above are very good at Tier 5. You have plenty of options, so you see a lot of variety at Tier 5, which is one of the reasons that I prefer Tier 5. Um... Tier 7 is probably next in terms of variety. Obviously, I mean, we're four years into the development. There's a lot of different ships at Tier 7, so you get a lot of different looks. Uh, a lot of good, strong ships at Tier 7, even though a lot of people tend to follow the trend of playing just a few handful of ships. Uh, but Legendary Tier and Tier 8 is just abysmal. I mean, you see the same three ships over and over again, pretty much, and that's it. Like, it just gets old. You know what I mean? It feels like every game is the same. You get like four four Shimas per team. You get three Yamas. You get uh, 30 Worcesters. Obviously, I'm being facetious, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um... It's not that they uh, took six years to develop a game and actually care about the game. It's, it's more the scope of the game that they're talking about um, when, they, when they trash Baldur's Gate because of the sheer ludicrousy of the dialogue options and the different endings and all of that. And uh, I forget how many hours of, uh, of cinematic cutscenes are in the game. Like that, That's kind of what the gaming industry is upset about because it means that uh, they have to work harder to make their game stand out. Um, otherwise, people are going to look at it and be like, eh, I don't understand the big, the big deal here. Dude, once, once we get this freaking Korea done, like we need to, we need to finish these freaking cruisers off. These cruisers are annoying as crap. But you need games like that, though, occasionally. You need games to come along and break the status quo. You know what I mean? You need games to come out and challenge what people think is possible to force the, the industry to adapt. Otherwise, you just get the same goddamn games over and over again every year. And then you, you're just paying $60 every single year for the same goddamn game. And that's no good for anybody. I mean, look at the amount. Look at the amount of games that are like that, though. I mean, you've got the Maddens, the Call of Duties, the you know, all all of these games. They're they're all the same in terms of the just copy paste Madden thirty six, Madden eighty two. You fucking just keep going. It just Call of Duty 763. Have they actually made any like improvements to the game, or is it the same game every single year with a slight reskin? Like that's that's the problem. Or at least that's the problem I have. Which is why I've been lately I've been focusing more on smaller game titles, uh, like indie games. Uh, that you you wouldn't expect to be like anything because they can be a lot of fun. They're not as expensive, so you can play them, 
have your fun and be done with them and not have to worry about it. Whereas when you play a game or you pay $70 for a game, like you're like, okay, well now I've got to play this game for two years to get my money's worth. You know what I mean? Whereas you can, you can pick up a game like this. That's a lot cheaper. Have a good time. Just do some crazy stuff and then just enjoy it. And then once you're done with it, you're done with it. You don't expect this game to be crazy, like triple A, over the top. But it it can be fun for what it is. Um, I mean, being able to design and build your own ships based off of modules and stuff that you can put together in so many different ways, like, is crazy. Like nobody else is doing that, or at least they weren't prior to this game coming out. So like that's what drew me to this game. As soon as I heard about it from Stealth back in the day, I was like, oh my god, I gotta try this out. And then once I did, I fell in love with it, and I've been here for four years ever since. Forza games are, some, are something similar. Like, the production value of a Forza game is insane. Like, you got insane graphics, you got ridiculous simulation-esque racing. It's still kind of arcadey, but kind of simulation at the same time. Like, you can take that into a hardcore sim as well. Um... Especially like the actual Forza Motorsports rather than Forza Horizon. Forza Horizon's more arcadey. But Forza Motorsports are insanely sim based and they're they're really good. But I think it is also suffering from the same problem. Like has there really been anything stand out since Forza Five? Like Forza Five is like the pinnacle of Forza for me. I played the ever living sh out of Forza Five. But Forza 6, never never got into it. Forza 7, never got into it. Like, they haven't really... Like, it's the same game. The tracks are the same. Like, the, the gameplay is the same. Like, there's only so many different cars that exist in the world. Like, you've played them all. They're the same. So, again, it, it's one of those where they need to come up with a new way to make the game better. And a lot of these games just don't have that. Um... That's why I'm interested in Starfield. Starfield releases, what, next month? So I'm interested in that. I'm a, I'm a Bethesda fanboy. I love I love Bethesda. Love me some uh, Elder Scrolls, some Fallout. Starfield's a new title. I'm looking forward to seeing how that, that progresses. Uh, it'll be interesting for sure. But at the end of the day, my big thing is I know Bethesda. And I know that the game is going to have a lot of issues. And I just hope that it doesn't have game-breaking issues. I want to be able to jump into the game, have a good time, and, and learn or like play some new stuff and not have to worry about game-breaking bugs, which are just a, a theme among games nowadays. Like, it's one thing to have small bugs that are, you know, okay, this is kind of funny. Like, Borderlands. Borderlands is a perfect example. There are game-breaking bugs in Borderlands as well. But Borderlands 2... It's one of my favorite games of all time. Full of bugs. There's bugs everywhere. You, you got more bugs in that than, like, the local crack house down the road. Right? So, the, the difference is, there's a difference between having bugs in the game and game-breaking bugs that destroy your experience while playing the game. And those are the bugs that seem to never get fixed by the freaking, uh, like, AAA titles. You know what I mean? Like, they just seem to leave them in. Or or they don't... They somehow go under under the radar. With all of the testing abilities that these companies have to, to be able to, to check and recheck and quality control and somehow they miss some of the most broken shit possible. You know what I mean? That's the part that drives me crazy. That is a lot of bugs. Red Dead Redemption is another one of those. Fantastic game. Ridiculously over the top. Uh, Rockstar is known for that. That's why they kind of get a bad rap as well. They get a, a ridiculously bad rap for spending way too long. But their products that they release are insane. I mean, look at GTA 5. How long has that game been out? GTA Online still going strong. Like, after all these years, um, 
the games stand up to the test of time and despite it taking forever for them to come out with a new title when they come out with a new title it's a fucking banger like it's not it's not something that they just fucking like threw together overnight you know what i mean it's it's a badass fucking game so like when gta 6 comes out you know damn well that that, that game's gonna be insane like they take their time they get the shit done and like at least from a base level like when gta online first released it was a fucking nightmare same thing goes for elder scrolls online anybody who fucking tried to get into those games day one fuck there was nothing you could do like, you legitimately could not get into the fucking server on GTA Online or G or uh, Elder Scrolls Online when those games released. Like, for real. Like, you just could not log into the server. It would not let you. Because um, the demand was too high. Um, and that's why I always laugh at, at companies that have that issue, like, for smaller games. It's like, dude, like, that is a crazy, crazy problem to have. Like, when you are in a position where you have set up, okay, this is our projected sales. This is what we're expecting out of, out of our, our audience to participation and all of that. And then you run into a situation where it is literally more people interested in playing your game than you have server room for. That's a crazy fucking concept. And I'm not saying that Rockstar isn't isn't noted for having their own game breaking bugs and so is so is Bethesda. Like they all they all have huge game breaking bugs that are kind of ridiculous. Um, but usually they don't in they don't impact everybody and ruin your experience. Like whereas companies like Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed and stuff, like I remember playing Assassin's Creed um, I think it was Revolutions. It was the French one. Um, and I literally was going through the campaign and got stuck in a fucking bug. Whereas I'm running across the rooftops of the fucking uh, place. I just got stuck in midair. Couldn't move. Couldn't do anything. Lost all my, all, all my progress and I never played the game again. Like legitimately never played the game again. I don't know if they ever fixed the bug. I'm assuming they probably did at some point. But that's what I'm talking about like shit like that like literally the most basic aspect of your game is parkour running across rooftops ridiculous combat like stuff like that that shouldn't be the things that are busted in your game I can forgive smaller bugs where you know maybe it isn't in line with the uh, like playability that you expected somebody to run into like, that kind of makes sense. But basic stuff, like in the middle of a normal mission, running across the rooftops of this mission, I got stuck in midair and not able to do anything, and there was nothing that I could do to fix it. Like, lost my entire, like, progress. Like, it was stupid. Black Flag was amazing. Still one of the best Assassin's Creed, in my opinion. Sorry to hear that, Vimo. Hopefully you get feeling better. Black Flag was just so good, man. The story was fantastic. The gameplay was fantastic. There's still bugs in Black Flag that are game-breaking as well. Um, I remember, like, one of the first bugs that you encountered in that game was not able to finish the one mission, like, right at the beginning when you first get into, uh, I think it's Havana, right? Like, you literally pull into Cuba with the, the merchant that you, like, hijacked slash cooperated with. Um the very first thing that you're supposed to do is like chase a dude through town and sometimes that fucks up and just lock soft locks your game 
so you can't ever complete it. Um, you have to restart the, the game. So, like, like, shit like that, like, drives you crazy. Shouldn't, shouldn't exist, right? But, at the end of the day, we all keep coming back. We, we love our games. We enjoy it so much. Yeah, the sea shanties and stuff were fun. I mean, I still occasionally sing those. Uh, what a boss. Sea of Thieves, I would say, is a very solid game. It's just not my style. Like, it's, it's very, very well done. I've seen a lot about it. I've watched a lot of videos. It's just not for me in particular. It's time to go now. Haul away your anchor. See, in modern war, that's the other thing. Like, Assassin's or not Assassin's Creed, but but uh, Call of Duty has gotten so fucking like repetitive with their shit that they're just renaming everything the same things as they've already named like there was already a modern warfare 2 there's already a modern warfare 3 they, there was already black flag or not black flags but like black ops and yet they keep reusing the same goddamn names they can't even come up with original titles nowadays just like it's modern warfare 2 it's modern warfare it's a modern warfare 3 it's like literally modern warfare 3 came out 10 years ago ask me how i know <laughs> i played it That's crazy to think, too. That's the other thing. I'm so goddamn old now. I'll be 37 next month, man. I have been through the, the pinnacle of gaming and seen the highs, the lows. Seen everything go from all the way back in the day with an Atari all the way up through to what we're playing today. Like, that's crazy. I know, Stung. I know, compared to some of y'all, I'm, I'm young. But still, I feel old as shit when I go... Modern Warfare 3 came out 10 years ago or whatever. Like, it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> I am that old. Like, legitimately, Black Ops 2. Like, when the last time I played Black Ops 2, man. I, I, fuck. Back when I was playing Black, or like, Call of Duty games. Like, I was just a young pup. <laughs> I was just a young pup. Back when I actually had reaction times and a accuracy. Dude, I've watched so much progress through the years, the short amount of time that I've been alive. Like, for reals. It's kind of crazy. Going all the way from... From... Uh, uh, cassette tapes, to CDs, to digital media, from VHS tapes... To DVDs, to HD DVDs, to Blu-rays, to to digital media, like it's it's kind of kind of crazy when you think about how far we've come in such a short amount of time, technology-wise. And even crazier to think about is how all that technology usually started as something military-related. Yeah, this kind of fucked us. God dang it. I knew this was going to happen. So they moved more tonnage into the area, and it's fucking with us. All right. Auto resolve. Light damage. By them having ships here, they've increased the amount of naval tonnage that we need to have up here. We just don't have the tonnage, so we're actually not going to complete that now. God dang it. We need to sink some of those turds. We just don't have the ability to right now because we're spread so far, so thin. Spread out too thin, man. Both of our subs were sunk down here in South Africa. It's 
There's not much we can do about it, unfortunately. From a politics standpoint, can we go ahead and start looking at... Uh, see, we're already grabbing Gambia. Or Senegal. Mauritania would be the next one. Politics. France. Where are you at, France? What about some of these out here in the the ocean? Where are some of the ones that we need to take? We need to start looking at taking this territory, French Guiana. But I don't have enough fleet power there. We do have these guys out here, though. That's one light cruiser going somewhere. Uh, Hakahau and the Marquesas Islands. Move these guys a little bit closer. Politics, France, naval invasion, choose province. The Marquesas Islands, let's go for it. Start grabbing their territory that's out here in the South Pacific. Then we'll, we'll move back over here to the Caribbean and try to take this if we can. But again, I, I do want to try to take as much African territory off of them as we can. we go to subs i know we have the ability to build some new subs here so let's go ahead and do that we have cruiser submarines with a stealth of only eight but an attack of 13.5 13.94 knots top speed Four bow torpedo tubes, three stern torpedo tubes, two three and a half inch guns, and two five point nine inch guns, and an advanced diesel electric engines. Thing is, like they don't really have. These are stealthier. With three bow, two stern. Two six inch guns. Might as well select these. Let's build six of them. That's the thing. We we have we have the ability to build a lot of these. So these are the ones we're building currently. So three of them we will put at See, South Africa, we did just lose. So let's go Port Elizabeth. It's going to take nine months to build these. And then other than that, I think we need to take these guys to... Hmm... I think Keelung would be a good place. All right, research. Still working on big guns, still working on explosives. We did finish this. We can pull off of that. Get back on some more submarine hulls. And keep this fight going. Have a good night, Vimo. Appreciate you dropping in. Sega CD games were Lunar, The Silver Star Story, Mortal Kombat, and whatever Eternal Champions was called on Sega. Um, one of my favorite games back then, I never actually had a Sega. Um, my cousin had a Sega Genesis, and uh, or Sega Saturn, and... He had the um, the Jurassic Park back in the day. I remember that thing was pretty crazy. For its time, anyway.
I'll tell you what, on PlayStation, the original, one of my favorite games of all time was Digimon World 2000, I think is what it was called. Now, I didn't really care for the original Digimon World, and I didn't care for Digimon World 3 and 4 that followed. Maybe it was Digimon World 3. I forget. There was one that was specifically like one that uh, was on PlayStation, the original. I want to say it was Digimon World 2000 or something like that. Or maybe it was 3000. Maybe it was Digimon World 3000. But it was very good. I was a Digimon fan growing up because I didn't have Pokemon. Like, I didn't have access to Pokemon. So Digimon were my thing because Saturday morning cartoons. Um, we didn't have satellite when I was growing up. So we, we had to watch, like, Saturday morning cartoons on Channel 6. So, like, Digimon were my, my thing. I think it was Digimon World 3000. It was the third Digimon World game. Um, and then I ended up buying Digimon World after that and playing those. And those were okay. But I definitely preferred Digimon World 3000. The story was good. The The open world fun, like, it, it, was, it was actually good. It was very good for its time. Blitz the League, yeah, those are classics. Classics. I remember NFL Blitz back when it was called NFL Blitz. Before the NFL was bought out by fucking EA. Alright, we gotta do something about these cruisers, man. Have to. Dude, Digimon was a better story overall than uh, than Pokemon. You can you can like take that for what it is, but I prefer the story of Digimon. Like they had some crazy stories. Pokemon was just more popular because of Nintendo and it was all over the place. Like you couldn't escape it. But Digimon in its heyday was ridiculous. All right. Enemy spotted to the southwest, so we're going to head that direction. We're going to engage these little turds and try to sink them. I'm done running from them. If we lose ships, we lose ships. I've got to try. I, I need to get some of the tonnage out of this area so that we can try to uh, take the Koreas. Japan just sitting like 16 cruisers in on top of us is just annoying. Dude, Final Fantasy 7. I never even got to the second disc of Final Fantasy 7, man. I think the furthest I ever got was the, the rooftop battle against um, dude with like the prism shield or whatever, if I remember correctly. But I also never had like a, um, a game save, whatever you call it. So every time I tried to play Final Fantasy VII, I was having to do it like the old-fashioned way. From scratch.
Wall of skills activated. Again, goal is working. We're, we're drawing all these torpedoes away from the main fleet. Let's uh, change course here. Again, don't want to do too crazy. Just want to keep them off balance. Keep, keep them launching their torps at our agile stuff. Because their guns are not that scary to me. It's their torpedoes that are the problem. the amount of torpedoes these guys are firing exploding off my left side here. Change course. This is what we call a destroyer screen, guys. We get these guys to waste all their torpedoes and, and stuff on these agile targets that they have no hope of actually hitting. God dang it. That was bad timing. They can definitely hit them with their guns, though. Which is more than I can say about my guys, unfortunately. My guys can't seem to hit anything with their guns. Which is really unfortunate. See if we can't, uh... bait more of their torpedoes out.
just got to keep them launching torps at these guys and not our, our main fleet. It's starting to get a little bit dangerous for us here, especially 10 can. All right, uh, detach. Ten can need you to retreat. Boy, it'd be real nice if we could actually land a hit on these guys. Oh shit. Dud. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Now we're talking. Lack of accuracy is a real problem. Oh shit. We're gonna eat a torp. Like, we baited so many torpedoes away from these guys, and yet they just keep launching more. Like, they just have an unlimited amount of torpedoes, it seems like. some good hits but unfortunately not enough Still have so many torpedoes. So 
Try to get everybody to fire at the guy that's at the closest. Maybe if we focus fire, we can get rid of some of these guys. Nothing. They're just too fast, man. They're literally 40 knot light cruisers with torpedoes coming out of everywhere. getting a couple of hits here and there but they're not big hits they're not those hits that slow somebody down and, and leave them vulnerable Come on, just hit the fucking target, man, please. Finally! There we go! We need more of that! Those are the hits that we need. More of those slow these little fuckers down. Make them easier to hit. talking once we slow them down we tear them apart it's just slowing them down that's the problem I think we definitely need to uh, improve our, our Pacific fleet here. That is definitely something that needs to occur. This guy still has torpedoes, isn't a very real threat. Dodge if you can, I know he's point god dang blank, so good luck dodging. literally just eats every one of them. The fact that they're missing while this close is actually insane to me.
Like, look how close we are. How are we missing these shots? At this point, I'm kind of scared that I'm going to get shot by my own fucking team. Well, that sounded like it hurt. Look out. He may be going for a ram here. He has no more torps. Okay, down he goes. We're basically circling the wagons right now because these guys are getting real brazen all of a sudden. Alright, how many torpedoes? He's still got plenty. He's still got a couple. He's got none. Oh, shit. Look out, Tennessee stud! Oh, he's taking a hell of an evasive action. Let's hope that it's enough. Don't oversteer, please. Literally just sails right into the whole fucking thing. It's like they make one maneuver and then they just stop maneuvering after that. And now he's going to eat all these. Thank God they're duds. Shit, my destroyer. Get the fuck out of there. How did you manage to find all of the... Fucking turn around, you fucking idiot. Why are you still going forward? Oh, my rudder's dead. Oh, we just lost Torpsy Pop. That is for sure. We're fucked. Torpsy Pop is gonna go down. Get out of there, Torpsy. Liz. For the love of God, I don't know why you ended up sailing into an entire fleet of light cruisers. But if you could not do that, that would be that'd be ideal. I would rather you not not do the thing. Meanwhile, I gotta go check on my fucking fleet. We're about to do the same thing here. And these guys still have torpedoes. Let's focus these guys down, please. Tennessee stud ate all the torpedoes. Of course he did. There we go. Got some good flooding on the Mogami. Come on, Bert. 
You're doing good. You're doing good. Come on. I think we may have gotten Mogami here, potentially. It's close. Looks like he's gonna survive. There we go, another flood. Let's get turned around here. Try to regroup with the fleet. God, it's so annoying to watch all my shells just miss the target at this range. Come on, man. Oh, God. I think the game may have just crashed. Nope, didn't crash. We're good. It's back. Oh my god, my game is actually gonna fucking lose it. Something's going on now. Right. My game is struggling right now. I don't know what's going on. Christopher Hill coming in, re-upping his membership for 34 months. Appreciate you, my dude. Get some goats in the chat for Chris. Alright, I need to get fucking Bert detached. Like, he's just fucking sailing in circles right now. He went full Bismarck mode. Okay, who is this? This is Torch, so Torch needs to be out front. Three Mile Island following. Uh, Tennessee Stud and Bert. Bert can join Tennessee Stud. Both of these guys need to retreat. Our battleships will try to take it from here.
go. That's a big hit. That'll slow him down. Secondary is kicking some floods in here, maybe. That should be the end of the Tengu. In theory. Soya looks like he's going down as well. Come on, take out the Tengu. One more flood ought to do it. Do you have torps? You do not. Target him with the left side of the ship. There we go. Another flood. That should be the end of the Tengu. Secondary should tear this thing apart at this range. Switch targets to this thing here, the Ottawa, Ottawa. It's amazing when these things fire until they just do nothing. I love watching these guns fire, but I hate watching them miss. And that's what they do best, is just swing and miss. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and stop chasing these guys.
I would like to take this guy out if we can. Problem is, we don't have any more armor piercing for the main guns. Good news is, they're running out of ammo too. We can just get a flood or two. Should be able to finish him off. There we go. Got a flood, but it doesn't seem to be ending him. You would think I'd be able to get a flood at this range with secondaries. Come on! I mean, either way, we're burning him down too, so... There's a flood. Surely that'll finish him. Yeah, I think he's done. Alright, he's down. We accomplished our goal. We have taken heavy casualties on both sides, but we have not lost a ship. They have. Alright, battleships... Uh, I want you to go ahead and head in that direction, please. Your orders are to officially disengage. Mission accomplished. Now we just got to survive. What a fight, man! What a fight.
God, I remember the days of having to input controller cheats, man. That is old school. That is old school as it comes. Contra. Go back to Contra days. Ikari Warriors. We didn't end up sink sinking all the enemy ships, but we never lost a ship of our own. And we sank several of them. So I feel pretty good about it. What up, Daniel? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Car, how's it going? Uh, it is the end of 1934. So we got about 15 years left in the campaign. Dude, there, I remember the days of the Game Informer magazine, Nintendo Power, uh, the Game Sharks, all the fun, man. Then, uh, of course, you had, you had not only those, uh, those cheats like that, but you also had like um, the demo discs. You guys know what I'm talking about, the good old demo discs. I, I swear, half the games I owned were because of the demo discs. Yeah, Game Genie. And battle's over. It is a victory for us, but at a cost. We lost 869 sailors in this fight, but no ships. All of our ships will be repairable. Uh, we sank five of their ships, all light cruisers. They lost 6,500 men. The USS Game Boy. Another fight with their freaking heavy, or their light cruisers. Dude, I swear, how many more light cruisers do these guys have? Like, for reals, man. I kind of want to auto-resolve this and just see what happens. I hate to lose divine judgment, but at the same time, like, I'm tired of this same conflict, so let's hope for the best. Okay, we didn't lose anybody, but uh, they also didn't lose anybody. This was a victory, well, considered a draw, even though we gained 400 points, they gained 51. Now we have a significant fighting force. Noriko is being engaged with his fleet against uh, several heavy cruisers. 
several light cruisers and a couple of destroyers thrown in there for good measures. Uh, Noriko is one of our most modern battleships, so I expect this to go pretty well for us. He does have a couple Eagle-class heavy cruisers with him. So we'll see how that goes. Here we go. Looks like we're going to be in the fog. Alright. So... I'm going to put the cruisers in with Noriko. Remember, Noriko actually has radar and everything, so he should be pretty solid. But we're going to have our destroyers go out and spot for us. Noriko is armed to the teeth with 17-inch guns. We got 12 of them. Imagine seeing this thing come out of the fog. Okay, it looks like we've got multiple groups lighting up on radar now. Oh, Jesus. That is a significant fighting force. These are Mark 1 17 inch guns though, so we gotta be careful there. I've gotta try to keep these guys lit up. Preferably without suiciding, though. Let's, let's not suicide ourselves. Just keep them lit. Shit. Took a torpedo.
Doing a pretty good job so far of smacking these guys around. Ouch. Just took a hit. At least their heavy cruisers don't seem to have as many torpedoes. We are we are inflicting some serious damage on them. I'm sorry that it's so foggy, guys, but it is what it is. We don't really have a choice in the weather, unfortunately. Boy, this ship does not want to turn, I'll give it that. God, we took a torp. Okay, one heavy cruiser goes down. Leon Gambetta. So far, I mean, been a lot of shells exchanged on both sides. Once again, though, their torpedoes are the problem. I can't see shit. And this thing literally can't turn. Main thing is that we're actually landing shots with the main guns, which is good news. Come 
Everybody surrendered due to high casualties. Another heavy cruiser goes down. And of course, it sneaks right past and slams into my fucking heavy cruiser. Another heavy cruiser down. Another heavy cruiser goes down to extensive fires. Another light cruiser goes down. Huge hit on the light cruiser. We may not be the most mobile thing in the world, but we can actually dodge. <laughs> Just take some very specific Paying attention. <clears throat> Noriko's definitely leaving his mark on the world here. I'll give him that. Okay, now we're down to just the light cruisers, it looks like. At least the things that are still fighting. The biggest difference in this fight has been just accuracy. You can tell that these are our more modern ships, man. They're able to hit targets. Noriko has currently done 77,000 damage in this fight, which isn't the greatest for a battleship of this size, but it's not bad. Better than nothing. And it got eerily quiet.
just look at the amount of shells coming in from the few ships that are on our side. Like, good lord. I wonder if we can switch to AP and actually pin this thing. We only got four inch guns, so they're not exactly strong. Yeah, I just gotta watch. I don't. Ooh, he just got absolutely smashed by 17 inch guns. Our smoke ran out. Our smoke ran out. Run! I think we just killed our destroyers, unfortunately. Shit, yeah, it's done. It's done. 7.3 inch guns, man. When they land, it ends badly for me. Unfortunately, we're surrounded by these guys now. Maybe bit off a little bit more than we could chew here. With our destroyers. But they did their job. They spotted for the entirety of the battle. And they managed to uh, bait a lot of torpedoes. They're still alive. We did lose one. I'm worried about Defiant. There we go. I was going to say, Defiant can't seem to turn. No, Spearfisher! Don't you die on me! No! Alright, give me everything you got. Get the hell out of there. Ouch. Ouch! I dodge the torps and then I just get run over by guns again. I mean, in fairness, Defiant has done pretty well as well. I mean, Defiant's done 5,800 damage in this fight. Which is not bad for a destroyer. Down goes the Defiant due to high casualties, though. So we lose all three of our destroyers. But I feel like the enemy definitely came out on uh, the bottom end of this battle. And if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to take out the rest of their ships as well. Look at the secondaries on this thing, though. It just never ends once they open up. 
It's like a fire hose. Literally. Except this one ain't putting out fires. Why are these guys so far back? Get in the fight. I know Noriko's tough, but I'd rather not send him up into the fight all by himself, please. There we go. Another light cruiser down. Overall, this has been a resounding success, I think. Not without casualties. I think we can go ahead and end the battle there. We did lose three destroyers. They lost 15 ships, including every one of their heavy cruisers and the majority of their light cruisers. Only one light cruiser got away. So, uh, a resounding success for us. They lost 11,000 men. We lost 1,100, so 10 times the losses that we had. Uh, in terms of damage, Defiant ended up with 6,100 damage. All three of our destroyers did okay for damage considering that's all like gun damage. Um, in terms of overall damage, Noriko ends up with 130k. So very respectable there. Fall River doing pretty well. Our light cruiser, not so much, 15k. And then our United States class Frederick, uh, 33k as well. So overall, pretty, pretty solid fight for our side of the fight. That's for sure. I don't even know what you guys are talking about in chat anymore. Should noodles be eaten from a cup or a bowl? I mean, considering a cup and a bowl are very, very similar, I don't think it really matters, does it? The French immediately asking for uh, peace, but we're not going to give it to them.
All right, so we are officially launching this naval invasion, which is good. Uh, this naval invasion has still got plenty there, three more months for that one. Uh, these naval invasions are probably not continuing to go up anymore. Actually, I lied, it will. We managed to repel the uh, aggressors out of our zone, allowing us to uh, start making progress on these again. Love to see it. I say aggressors. We're actually taking their territory. I think we are the aggressors here. But, uh, see, we got a submarine battle down here. Let's go ahead and click that. Five transports versus three subs. I mean, the subs should just annihilate them. And we, we sank the transports. Beautiful. You'll love to see it. So with our submarines in the neighbor, neighborhood helping out, we should be able to uh, maintain that naval invasion. Hopefully. And hopefully we have deterred them from coming after us. They do still have a battle cruiser over here, so we got to keep that in mind. But for the most part, I think we're doing okay. We have we have sent the, the Japanese home with their tail between their legs. And we have shown the French that we are willing to uh, defend ourselves when it comes to taking the territory that we're trying to take. So we're not going to go down easily. I think that is the number one takeaway for these guys is that we don't go down easily. You want to fight, we'll give you a fight. All right, and with all of that, I think that's the end of 1934, guys. It's officially January of 1935. <laughs> I don't think you could call what we've been doing liberating. I think we've been just going around doing what we please. If we're going to be completely honest. To make an omelet, you have to break a few eggs. I mean, you're not wrong. By the end of this campaign, we should have one hell of an omelet. Another submarine fight here. We do have some anti-sub capabilities, but our destroyers were killed. And we do manage to take out the sub, surprisingly. Uh, not a very good sub. And now our transports are being attacked. Where? Central Atlantic? Nothing we can do about that. They do manage to sink our transports. And this is exactly what we were talking about. Um, the enemy has sent the battlecruiser Akagi with a complement of light cruisers as an escort to take on Battleship Torch, Battleship Three Mile Island, and their uh, complement of cruisers and destroyers. I mean, this guy has 15.4 inch guns. Meanwhile, we have 14 inch guns. And it has 10 of them. 36,000 tons. So yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, this is a pretty real threat. And you add on top of that the fact that they have, uh, the enemy has the cruisers there as well. I think what we may try to do here is just go straight for the battle cruiser with our, our destroyers. Try to take them out as quickly as possible. Enemy spotted to the northwest, so we will make turns that direction. Um, I want you guys in a division with our battleship. And then I want all of the destroyers to be in their own division. I want torpedoes off until I say so. Enemy is spotted on the horizon already. Our goal is to overwhelm and inundate this 
battle cruiser with torpedoes. Preferably without losing a ship. The fact that we spot this thing at 25 kilometers away is kind of crazy. It's a heck of a way to kick off 1935 though, isn't it? It's like immediately a big ship battle, but uh, I don't really want to go to window big ship battle when this guy has 15 inch guns and we have 14 inch guns. Would much rather deal with this the old fashioned way. We're officially in range to start slinging. They seem to have a pretty good, like, screen going for them, which is unfortunate. We've been detected. Everybody targets the battle cruiser here. I would like to get a little closer, but I'm also terrified of all of the secondaries that that thing has. So I think at this point, we go ahead and prepare to launch our torpedoes. And then also avoid getting torped ourselves. Now wait. Okay, we did get a torpedo hit. We also just got smacked. If anybody's holding on to torps, now's the time. Get them out of there. All right, we did land a torpedo or two on him. So that's good news. That'll slow him down, make him easier to hit. Owie. We may lose tin can here. It's always tin can that gets the worst of the... Yeah, down he goes. We're doing some decent damage to him.
All right, Torps out. Shit. Okay, the Akagi has surrendered due to high casualties. Good news. Having a little bit more seasoned crews is definitely coming in handy. Let's go ahead and make sure everybody's trying to dodge torps if you have to. Oh, shit. Friendly torpedoes, look out! God dang, oh my god, those are not friendly. None of them are friendly. Surprisingly, the enemy's friendly torpedoes are definitely more friendly than mine. God dang it. Yeah, there's literally no such thing as a friendly torpedo, I know. Ask the Americans. They're, they know all about friendly torpedoes. Can you please, like... Can you, like, turn around and go the other way? I don't like how you're close you're getting to all these torpedoes. and have you retreat. Uh, let's see. Tennessee, have you go ahead and detach as well. Three Mile Island, detach. And then... I forgot our light cruisers actually have torpedoes too. I mean, not as many as their light cruisers do. But it's at least an option. Shit! Wasn't paying attention! Thank God, most of these torps are duds, man.
Hazardous is completely out of ammo. I think at this point we uh, cut our losses. And get out of here. We've succeeded in our mission of sinking the main threat. One down to fires. Look out! They're gonna touch tips! Down goes the Thrasher. Bert is not long behind. Down goes Bert. Having no no like main gun ammo sucks.
And now we're out of AP. For the secondaries. Come on, secondaries! Fire! A lot of shells bouncing off our ship right now. We've almost got this guy to surrender. Okay, down he goes. Switch targets. We're still fighting though. I got no ammo left. I am completely out of ammo. Speed up time. Ship has been turned into Swiss cheese. Not what I would call ideal. These guys are a long ways away, but hopefully we'll be able to call this battle here shortly. What up, GX? How's it going? I mean, actually, now that you mention it, I could have turned this thing into a torpedo, but they're faster than us, so not likely to, to land. But we lost 2,400 sailors in this fight, unfortunately, due to several light cruisers going down, Burt and Thrasher. But we did take out their Akagi. We took out two of their four light cruisers as well.
The first Bismarck was the first armored cruiser of the Imperial German Navy and was built in 1896 to 1897. The design was an improvement over the preceding Victoria Louise class protected cruisers, featuring 11 461 or sorry, featuring 11,461 tons of displacement and 18.7 knots maximum speed. Her armament comprised two twin 9.4 inch guns multiple secondaries of 5.9 and 3.5 inch calibers as well as six torpedo tubes it's the original bismarck aka the first bismarck aka the first all right so that was a fight but uh a fight that we win god darn it i i don't want to do another fight i want to end the stream This is another Paladin class battleship with 16 inch guns. I want to end the stream. I think I can. Okay, I can. I can save here and we'll end it. Okay. It is officially four hours into the stream. You guys know the deal. Uh, on the back of that epic fight that we just had, we're going to go ahead and end this stream. So we will save overriding our save i appreciate everybody dropping in hopefully you guys enjoyed don't forget if you did enjoy punch that like button if you guys are excited to see more ultimate admiral back on the channel make sure you guys come by i will try to make sure that we get at least one stream a week on sunday nights you guys know that i know i've been uh, slacking lately in terms of ultimate admiral but i'll try to get back into the habits so we can wrap up this campaign it is currently 1935 which means we have 15 years left in this campaign and if you like what i'm doing Punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.